Hey guys, The Common Man here. So today I've got in front of me my Spyderco Manix 2 Lightweight. So this knife has been absolutely incredible. I've really been thoroughly impressed with this thing. Um, I carry this, uh, honestly, I, I carry it for the majority of the week. Every day that I go to work, I have this in my uh, cargo pants pocket. My real goal today is to go ahead and get this guy cleaned up and tuned back up because it has it has uh, gotten a little bit of blade plate, not very much, but just a little bit over time, and uh, it's just got a little bit of a gritty action, not the way that I had it when it was uh, when it was brand new. So I just wanted to improve it a little bit, and I thought uh, let's get this on video because this model is now you can see the latest version of it has screwed construction, whereas the previous version had pinned construction, meaning. You couldn't take it apart. I have never opened up a Manix 2, even my G10. I have not opened that guy up yet. So uh, this is going to be trial and error. We're going to kind of go through this together, and I will share my experience with all of you guys. So I'm thinking that that pivot's going to be maybe a T10. Yeah, so that's going to be a T10. So when you're taking this thing apart, just be super careful when undoing that screw because this could be extremely easy to strip. And once you strip that screw out, that's bad news. That's that's not going to be good for you. Um, I really need to invest in a mat or something here too so that I can keep all my screws organized. Yeah, so this is using... I, I would imagine it's blue Loctite, but it is, uh, it's really packed in there. There we go. So we've got that pivot. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this pivot, both screws completely apart, and I, I think I'm going to try to keep it oriented with the handle like this and then those screws separated side to side so hopefully we can remember that but we'll see I would hope these body screws are T8's and not T6's yeah so that's going to be a T8 T8 and then yeah the rest of the body screws are T8's so very cool so no T6's on here which I'm happy to see we'll go ahead and pull that uh, pocket clip screw off as well because I yeah, I'm going to say that definitely needs to come off. So I'm really interested in seeing how this is constructed. And Actually, I'm hoping that this will kind of help me remember orientation is putting the clip. No, I would want to put the clip on this side. Yeah, we'll see if that even makes a difference. I may end up smacking that with my finger and sending everything flying, but <clears throat> hopefully not. But I'm interested in seeing how this is constructed considering they went from a pinned construction to a screwed construction. Um, I'm wondering if we're going to see anything kind of kind of different in here. I, it seems like it's pretty straightforward, but I guess you never really know until you dig in. Put that there. And like I said, I am just going to start taking these screws right out and make it so we'll see if we can just pop one scale off at a time. Boy, this is making me nervous, though, because that coil spring, if that goes flying... Like I said, I, I haven't even looked up a video on how to disassemble this thing, so I'm really flying blind here. And then this pin, so this will this will kind of pop out as we get this scale off. Or should I push it? Maybe I ought to give that a little punch. Just give it a little push out of there. Just try not to touch the threads. Push it by the edge. Yeah. So let's not try that. Let's see wondering if I'm going to have to pry this apart. So that's coming off. You can see that that's starting to separate there. We're going to do it just very carefully. Yeah, okay, so that's coming off quite nicely. There we go. Yeah, so look at that. Okay. Oh, very interesting. Look at this washer here. That's, that's super unique. I kind of love that. I actually really love that. I love that kind of captured washer. That's really cool. I could see that actually helping this knife uh, action remain consistent. That's a very cool feature. We're going to kind of, like I said, I'm keeping all these screws sort of oriented the best that I can. So I want to keep everything in the same position. So we'll put that, if I'm looking at the knife this way, we'll put that on that side. I really love that those washers aren't going to spin around in position. I, I think that's kind of a cool, kind of a cool feature. So let's go ahead and I think I'm going to pull this back we'll pull that uh, cage back I'm gonna lift the blade up and out of position okay and then oh interesting you know what what are we working with here oh you do have washers interesting so you've got this metal insert 
with the washers that ride on one side of it. That is very unique. Interesting. I wonder if the uh, the other Manix 2, the G10 version, is like that as well. Because like I said, I have not taken that apart either. Um, but now we're stuck with this kind of scary bit here with that coil spring in there. So I think what we have to do then is lift this whole cartridge out. I probably don't need to take the whole thing apart, but I want to because I'm curious. So I'm, I bet you I'm going to regret this. This is going to take probably a 10-minute cleaning and turning it into a half-hour cleaning, but we'll, uh, we'll see. So I need something. I do want to kind of pry at it just a little bit. I don't think I have anything thin enough to pry up. Yes, I do right there. So that is the can opener with that pretty fine flathead. There we go. So we're under it. And then this is the really scary part. So I think I'm going to try to keep this all captured. This is going to be really interesting putting back together. Oh boy. That guy. Duh. That certainly is going to make it difficult to take apart. Set that there. Now this should honestly, hopefully, just slip right off. Yep. Okay, so there goes the washer. So this washer was right there. So we'll put that there. Again, I really need to uh, get myself uh, like a mat, a disassembly mat. I think that, that would make life a lot easier. But we'll just work with what we got. You could also use little bowls or something like that to keep all these hardware in place. Okay, awesome. So that spring is actually not under a lot of tension. So that's nice to see. So that shouldn't, you shouldn't have to worry too much about that going flying. It seems like it's at pretty much its full range of motion when it's in the, the locked position. Uh, you do obviously need to keep track of that ball bearing. This would be an excellent time to replace this cage with something like a titanium or an aluminum, which I would love to do in the future. But as of right now, we're just gonna, we're gonna keep everything stock as it came so i'm actually really surprised i expected this to be a lot dirtier now like i said i carry this in a cargo pocket which actually has a, a, a flap it's a, like a covered cargo pocket so this carries underneath the flap so it actually does keep a fair amount of dust from getting into it so i guess that explains why it's not so dirty but i did expect this to be kind of a mess after opening it up so i don't know it's kind of nice to see that it's not too bad all right, we will set this here. Awesome, and then let's go ahead and just pop that pivot out of there as well. Cool, okay, so disassembly turns out to be not too bad. You may need something little to pry with, like on this uh, Leatherman multi-tool. I'm sorry, uh, this is actually a Victorinox multi-tool, which I'm really enjoying. And then another thing that I was curious about is if this backspacer is actually fixed into position or if this backspacer can actually be removed. It seems like it's going to take a fair bit of effort to get that backspacer disconnected. So I can't really say for sure without really, yeah, I don't want to dive too far into it, but that backspacer may not be removable from this side scale. So I don't need to remove it. I don't think it's a big deal, so I'm not going to worry about it, but something to check, take a look at. Um, I'm going to be right back. I actually forgot some uh, rubbing alcohol. So what we're going to do now is just kind of start cleaning parts up one by one. I am going to use this old uh, microfiber cloth. I try to use microfibers as much as I can because you, you could use paper towels, but then you worry about they always leave those little fibers, and I, that kind of drives me nuts. Hey, I, I'm probably going to go ahead and just speed this part up because I don't think it's really all that important to watch. But... Um, yeah, just get all of these parts cleaned up really thoroughly, get in all the nooks and crannies, and uh, these pivot locations are going to be very, very important. So anywhere where the, you know, the washers ride, um, where there's any mating surfaces, you really want to get this all cleaned up, because that is what's going to give you that nice, smooth, kind of buttery action when these pivot and uh, mating surfaces are all cleaned up really nicely. Okay, now this part I am going to slow down because um, I do want to mention what I'm doing here. Um, this has seemed to work for me pretty well in the past in getting really, really smooth action 
on knives that use uh, these phosphor, phosphor bronze washers. So what I do is I have a really flat, it needs to be very, very flat, um, a stropping, stropping pad. You can see that this is attached to a wooden block and uh, it's, you know, it's, it's as flat as I can get it. So what I do is I just go ahead and put my finger over this, this uh, phosphor bronze washer and I just kind of do a circular motion. Find yourself a nice flat spot on your stropping pad. You can see mine is kind of beat up. Uh, I, I am in need of a new pad here pretty soon. But um, just kind of do some circular motions and uh, I do it on both sides. And what we're looking for is that beautiful shine. You want to get a nice shine on that washer. So that should be really good. And then what I would recommend doing you know one more time is I would find yourself a nice clean spot on a uh, like I said I use a microfiber and then go ahead and just kinda just clean it up okay so now we've actually got these rotated I want these to be in this orientation this is gonna be a long video guys sorry this is uh this is a lot and like I said it is my first time doing this so you know trial and error we'll see if this actually works out the way it's supposed to so we're gonna put that right there and these it doesn't seem to matter what the orientation is I maybe should have paid attention to that but I think we're gonna be okay um, now this is the point where I am going to start adding some lubricant so I do want to put just a maybe a dab here that's a lot but we'll go ahead and just do a dab and a dab I don't mind having a little bit more than maybe what I need. It's not a huge deal to me because it's going to hopefully work its way out. And it's really going to allow that metal to, uh, all those friction surfaces are going to be rubbing against each other for a long time. So to have a little bit extra lubricant in there for that, you know, additional break in period is not so bad. The only downside is um, it could attract dust and dirt but like I showed with this knife that actually isn't such a big deal apparently the way that I carry it which is uh, that's a pretty cool thing to see so let's go ahead and see if we can slap this into position and that this might be this might be challenging having that washer on there I may have to take that off let's go ahead and I actually want to give this pivot ball one last cleaning not a bad idea too to try to keep your fingers clean um, you know it might be a good idea to kind of keep a rag nearby so you can continually wipe your fingers off to make sure you're not getting any junk on these freshly cleaned components yeah there goes the oof okay I don't think this is gonna be too terribly difficult but let's see is that supposed to be I don't think it matters I've noticed that this actually captures the ball bearing on one end. You can slip it down from the top. So I think I'm going to put that captured spot down at the bottom. Because in the assembly process, that ball is going to continue falling out. Let's see. Oh boy. Yeah, this might be a challenge. I'm wondering if I didn't really do this the best way. Yeah, this all needs to kind of stay together just like that. Because this, this metal... Um, spine part I guess actually kind of sits down in between these two um, these two lugs or extrusions whatever in that cage so then that kind of slips in there and that actually I think is gonna work to my benefit because I think it's gonna once I get this all slipped in it should kind of help keep everything together that's gonna go back in there it's a little fiddly guys okay and there it is cool so that is that's going to kind of help keep this whole thing together so that ball is now captured at the bottom it's captured at the top by this uh, this metal piece here and then that's actually holding this in as well i just heard some rattling i didn't like that okay that ball just is moving around in there just a little bit let's go ahead and wipe this off one more time since this fell on the on my desk yeah a little bit more lube more than I need I'm sure but that's fine and again a little bit more cool let's go ahead and I think we're just gonna put this barrel into the blade put a 
Let's see if it makes sense to place that in there and then place the blade on, trying to keep my fingers out of the way. Seems to be kind of a theme for Spyderco. I feel like I always struggle assembling, disassembling, reassembling their knives. And usually what it comes down to is this kind of um, the, the pivot that requires a screw on either side. That just always seems to complicate things. Whereas I, I wish that they designed it with a pivot that simply um, slips in from one side. Okay, there we go. So we've got that. So I need to somehow make sure that that doesn't come apart. All right, I'm really taking a risk by setting this down here, but we're going to do it, and we are going to take that risk. Okay, so that's that. I think it's going to be best for me to go ahead and put this washer directly over top of the, uh, the blade. We're going to do that there. Okay, and then let's put this here yeah okay all right well that wasn't too terrible and I don't think I'm missing any pieces all right that's still really scary <laughs> okay so let's go ahead and put let's put this first screw in doesn't seem to be threading anyway Okay, there we go. It just had to catch onto the thread. Okay, so that's the pin. Let's try this one one more time. Anyway, what I was saying is I'm not going to tighten these down uh, all the way just yet. You definitely want to just do just kind of uh, just snug. Oh, boy. Something came out of position. What happened? There we go. Okay, so you just pop that back a little bit as that falls on my finger. So you pull that back a little bit and everything just kind of pops back into place. So anyway, what I was saying is you just kind of... You just tighten these down until it's just, just barely snug. Maybe even back it off just a hair once you get there. And uh, the reason is you're going to have to tune everything up and it's going to require all of these body screws to be somewhat loose. And that's going to give you your best result when it comes to the actual action of the pivot. All right, so we're just going to screw that back in. And then I am going to go ahead and put that pocket clip on. Now what we're going to do is use Loctite. It'll keep your pivot consistent because it's going to keep that screw not only from backing out but from uh, really moving at all. And you don't need very much Loctite. That's that's probably more than what I need honestly. But we're going to go ahead and get this started in there. Uh, again, don't snug up the pivot just yet. And everything that I'm doing is based on my own personal experience and then, you know, some research and videos that I've seen from other, um, other channels. So, you know, methods could be different. Everyone's method could be different. But ultimately, if you end up with a uh, pivot action that you're happy with, uh, smoothness and construction, you know, everything, everything's to your, to your satisfaction, then you must be doing it right. So, you know, this method has always worked for me or has been working for me since I've done it. So I am going to go ahead and snug this up just tight because I do want to get everything seated together really nicely. And then I'm going to go back and also snug up the body screws. Again, not tight, but just, just snug. All right, so that's a nice drop shut action, but I've got tons of blade play. So what we do now is we go back to the pivot, and then I do, to start with, I do both sides. I noticed I just took up a lot of uh, a lot of slack on that side, and 
nice drop shot action still how's the blade play still some blade play so we'll tighten it a little bit more here a little bit more there still drop shutty still tons of ag tons of uh, tons of play and you'll see this is just it's like a game you just go back and forth back and forth continuing this process and uh, constantly and also keep in mind your uh, blade centering. So what I might actually have to do is, uh, anyone who follows Metal Complex has seen his, has likely seen his method of uh, centering a blade. Not only does it get that blade centered, it's going to also help the action as well. Usually if the blade is out of center, that means that something is shifted. Something is not in its proper position. So once you get that blade nice and centered, everything should be seated the way it's supposed to be, and it should also help with the action. All right, so what I'm going to do is because I've still got a fair amount of blade play, I'm going to back these screws off a little bit more. I think we're going to go ahead and use the metal complex approach. What you do is you fold up a piece of paper. Don't use my instruction as his, uh, yeah, my instruction is not the same as his instruction. This is his method. I am doing it the way that, uh, the way that he described the best of my ability so if you want to use his method if you think that you need it as well please go to his channel against metal complex and uh, use his instruction instead of mine I'm just kind of walking through the process here and I'm certainly not taking credit for his method so that is really centered but what we'll check for now is blade play and that is pretty dang good and considering we had this knife completely apart, it's very possible that it may have to have a little bit, just a little bit of a break-in period for that smoothness to come back. But I'm pretty happy with that blade centering. We're going to try it one more time. I'm really going to jam this paper in there to get that blade pushed off all the way to the side pretty much. And then just give it one more tweak. Okay, and then we're also going to go through and tighten up these body screws, and that should take up the rest of that slack. Let's take it out and see. We are centered, and that is quite stiff. Quite stiff. But again, we're centered. So what we can do now <laughs> is go back and just back off the pivot just a hair and we'll do both sides very lightly to begin with still centered still no blade play but still stiff back off just a hair and just a hair and that's actually in my opinion that's pretty good um, not a total drop shut, but that's within acceptable for me. And the more you use it, that'll continue to smooth out and it's actually already smoothing out. So good. There is no blade play. And honestly, that is pretty nice. And that is crazy smooth. Yeah. That noise that you were hearing was really just the ball bearing, but that is... Yeah, we'll keep working with it, but I think that that's going to become drop shutty very, very shortly. But again, no blade play. That's really my number one thing. And yeah, I'm good with that. We'll keep messing with it, but I think it's about where I want it to be. Uh, anyway, sorry guys, that was a crazy long video. Um, lots going on there. Like I said, my first time taking this thing apart and putting it back together, which was the real pain. Um, we're going to save the strapping. I'm not going to worry about doing that on the video. Uh, go ahead and check out my knife sharpening video if you want to see um, how I do that. It's pretty simple. But uh, anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Um, if this is your first time taking apart the Manix 2 Lightweight, I hope that I was able to help a little bit. If you like the video, leave a like. And if you want to see any more of my EDC and knife content, go ahead and hit subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. But thank you very much. Take care.